Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another Man 25 Ultimate Team Gameplay. We are in Season 6, Game 4 with the Vultures, getting a nice little tackle there on the kicker turn, make sure nothing happens there. Stuffing the run with Eric Berry right away, and just making him, force him to stop. That's one thing, if someone's running the ball, if they stop, unless they're just pulling the back juke on you, then you pretty much got them right where you want them. You know, you can't spend time thinking about where you're going to go when you're running the ball because you're going to get tackled. And that's what happened. Two plays in a row, we made a nice user play. One with the tackle, one not actually tackling him, but just our presence made us run made us run to Navarro Bowman. And then he just got stuffed. Once he came out trying to pass the ball, nothing really worked for him as he tried to throw the fade there to Calvin Johnson. He almost threw an interception to Sean Taylor, and then fourth down, we got a kind of covered stack by, I believe, Ahmad Brooks. But we do nothing with it. We only get three points. At the same time, though... I mean, pretty much gave us three points for free at least, so I'm not going to pass up that opportunity. Third down, definitely played it a little bit conservative. I did expect him to, you know, not be able to contain that, but he did. But still, at the same time, it was conservative because he did give us three points. I'm not going to blow that, you know. You don't want, just for, you know, momentum's sake, you don't want to give him the ball back and th make him think, oh, it's okay that I could go for it on fourth down and not get it because this guy's probably not going to convert it. Instead, now this fourth down, he knows he definitely has to convert it, and he does to Doug Bowen, and I was right there. I guess just a little bit out of position, but man, I was right there, God damn it. I, I'm just mad I didn't get that. And here he throws up a deep pass, so I believe Calvin... I'm not sure that's Megatron. It's some big-ass number 81, but thankfully that was not caught. But this one is caught by T.Y. Hilton over Charles Woodson there. And, you know, Charles Woodson barely gives up throws like that. I really like Woodson, but that one, not so good. T.Y. Hilton just spins around, catches the ball. And now, at least we're bringing up another nice third down and long. Third down and 11. He's throwing it, and once again, coming at my neck. And once again, I can't come up with a pick. Fourth and one, he runs hurry up, passes the ball, and he does get it. As you can tell, he doesn't exactly have the team I have. You know, I would say I probably have a better team. He's got Steve Young, quarterback, Doug Baldwin, and wide receiver and stuff like that. But he has the lead right now. Right? So, I mean, who cares about team overalls? Once you play the game, you play the game. Sometimes, you know, I might get a few extra box heads, but he's kind of executing better right now. I'm not sweating at this point because there is at least three chances or four chances even for us to get like an interception on that drive. He had to work really hard for his touchdown, but we fumbled the ball and now it's like, eh, third down and 12. Things are looking a little bit dicey right now in this undefeated season. We find Salsa Cruz there for the first down on the out route. He comes out man to man. We come out out route. Next play, throwing it up, Randy Moss. And Moss burns them deep. I believe that's Cham Bailey getting burnt and Randy Moss going in for the touchdown. And once again, the greatest single upgrade you can make to your offense that people can actually afford right now is the legendary Randy Moss for the Vikings, the 99-speed Moss. Obviously, the Patriot one's 102-speed, but that thing costs like 50 billion coins. You know, I don't think anybody has that. <laughs> but, um, the 99-speed Moss, you need one single upgrade, just get that guy and throw streaks. It doesn't take rocket science to throw a streak. And as you see, it's effective. Here, fourth and two, he comes out running the ball, and he gets it and done some. Hitting the gap there with Adrian Peterson, all the way to the 30, the 20. But finally, we're able to tackle him, but a big-time gain. Now, suddenly, he has an opportunity to score some points here, right before the end of the two-minute warning here. He comes out passing it, second down and 11, throwing it to the outside, trying to get the touchdown there, but cannot. Taking one more shot, and he throws an interception to Navarro Bowman with a chance to easily take the lead with a field goal instead I get to keep the lead going to halftime and I get balls so that was a big time change first of all the fact that he ran in there was pretty big but then he just gave up the field position right there just trying to force it into um I'm not even sure who but Bowman ended up getting the interception I was in the area to a Kikui and now you know third and two or third and three which we don't really mind running the ball and stuff like that but we come out on fourth and two not really the down I wanted after taking a conservative and we decided not screw the conservative look it only got us a field goal earlier let's go for it now and we get a touchdown with Sean McCoy some Sometimes you just got to take those chances, fourth and two, a really short down. As much as I love to say, hey, punt the ball, defense, get us a stop. I mean, I, f I felt like fourth and two was convertible, and it was. So now, instead of having a six or seven point lead, it's a nine point lead, aka a two possession lead, because he took his chance and he didn't convert, which is what I was kind of saying. Sometimes you can't always go for the home run, because sometimes you just screw up, and that's what happened. You give up three points in the game, and it puts you in positions like this fourth and five, throwing it to the tight end, Jordan Cameron, but he cannot get the first down. Great coverage there. Nobody was open. He took the check down, but the check down was not enough. Bowman was having a pretty good. Game up to that point was able to cover him and 
we force this guy to quit we get a win moving on oh uh, this guy apparently has this um seahawk stadium too i switched to seahawk stadium i think at the start of the season six so i didn't really i never really mentioned it but uh just just to let you know for the people who didn't notice i switched seahawk stadium but this is not me at home this is this guy at home and he's got the seahawk jerseys too he might be a Another thing people also mention is that I never match up stadiums and jerseys. Um, I, I just like mixing it up, man. I don't like keeping it that uniform and stuff like that. As unless Sean McCoy puts the whole Seahawks team there in a spin cycle and goes in for the touchdown there. Hit a spin to the right in. It was like there was nothing to the left when I spun to the right. You know, the Red Seas parted and we ended up getting a touchdown. So, pretty good start to this game. And it gets even better when Luke Kikui skies up and immediately turns around and gets us a touchdown so you know we didn't even do much a minute in the game is not even gone yet and we're up 14 nothing so we're pretty much on our way to another win at this point and that keekly man one of the most underrated stats about a middle linebacker especially when you're playing zone is jumping as sean taylor Ooh, actually was that even sean taylor that was actually intro roll i'm not even sure where sean taylor went but yeah, one of the most underrated stats for a middle linebacker is jumping because, as you saw there, Kikui jumps over people and it just helps you cover more fields. So any linebacker who's athletic, and that was definitely Sean Taylor on that hit, any linebacker who could jump like that is definitely a plus. One of the many reasons why I love that Kikui card. And check this out, fourth and eight. He throws it into double coverage. My two players bump into each other and Largent ends up moving the chains on that catch. So, you know, it's one of those things where you just gotta thank Madden. And now he ends up running in for a touchdown with Walter Payton and a play that should have never happened because that fourth and end we should have gotten to stop but we do have the 14 nothing lead and the one thing you can't do in that situation is you can't lose your composure because you know if you think Madden's out to get you and that kind of stuff then you're pretty much going to screw yourself up you're just going to lose your mind and all that stuff you just got to keep on playing because as I like to say the Madden BS usually evens out no matter what and here third down and 23 big play in the game after giving up the touchdown we were forced to a third down super long but we end up getting the first down the out route and nice play with Sean McCoy spinning and winning for the touchdown shady second big play of the game and they both result in touchdowns and you know we're balling right now in offense that's the one thing and third down you know if it's third down and very long, you know your opponent's coming out and main coverage, you just hit the out route, man. And that's why I did. Victor Cruz got the out route, got the first down two plays later. He almost puts himself in position to get a safety, but unfortunately for us, he's able to throw the ball away. But third down and 10, Patrick Peterson, one-handed. Oh, Patrick. Patrick Peterson's one of those damn cornerbacks where he'll just make those kind of weird catches. You'll be like, what? He just did that? Yeah, he just did that. Patrick Peterson, he's a baller. Here, third down, Inch is going to try to QB sneak it, but then we decide we're pitching to LaShawn McCoy, and we hit the stop and pop, and Shady again, ending up in the highlight reel. You know, as far as Sports Center's top 10 plays of the week or plays of the day, LaShawn McCoy just put up three of them in one play, you know? Like, dang. He just gave Sports Center some good feeds there. Here's second down and two. This dude down 28 7, trying to make something happen here. On the two minute drill here, a minute to go, run and play action, and he gets sacked. I believe that's Vontez Perfect coming in on the rush. Second down and 14. This guy wasn't really doing anything too dramatic on offense, you know what I mean? You saw there were slants, there were streaks. That's about it. Streaks, slants, third down and 14, big hit fourth down eight um any hope of winning alive comes on this play and he actually converts once again to steve largent sean taylor puts the big hit but does not force the drop instead he oh tried double coverage there nothing good happens when you throw in double coverage unless you know you got steve largent apparently i don't know but this is definitely not smart second down and forever and we force the sack we click on and make sure we can't throw it away bring up third down and 29 he throws it into triple coverage somehow almost got it but then he quits he didn't even take his chance. Maybe fourth down 29. He throws in double coverage and gets it like he did earlier. He didn't even take that chance. He just quit. So, uh, we'll take it, man. So, I hope you guys leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more Man 25 Ultimate Team gameplays. And I will catch you guys next time.